we can make any kind of shape, whether geometric or organic, um, basically anything can be made. We're gonna start with um, some geometric shapes because those are more straightforward and easy. And then branching out from there, and especially next week, we'll be doing even more organic shapes. So to start, we're gonna make a, um, a cube. And we're gonna use four millimeter rod for networking um, because it's the, it's just the easiest to work with. So get a length and we will make a three inch cube today. I made six inches on Monday, it seemed a little bit much. What are these? Okay, they're gonna become part of my comp my sculpture. So um, to make a shape like this, it's important to cut and do a little measuring beforehand. It'll really pay off. So I'm going to measure a couple three inch sections. Um, and I'm going to do four six inch sections with the three in the middle. Are they sticking to you? sections and then four three inch sections. And this is where the nippers really come in handy because they can give you a very precise cut. Oh. Good thing that wasn't on camera. I was cutting glass with my glasses on. That's a big no-no. Sorry guys. Bad bad example. Alright. Now we can record of it. <laughs> no, no, I was not. I was out of the frame, so no one has to know about you. Yeah, but isn't the camera on? Well, yeah, but you yeah, actually said it. So, but I don't think anyone's gonna watch that part. They're gonna skip through it. And if they didn't, they get some juicy gossip. <laughs> All right. So I have four six-inch sections, and I marked in the middle at the three-inch mark. That one's a little off, so I'm just going to like that. I'm gonna use a small flame and heat the other end of the Sharpie on the opposite end of where the Sharpie marker is. And then I'm gonna to go to my graphite where there's a 90 degree angle and uh, flatten it like that to make a right angle. Yeah, nifty, right? So we're just gonna do that four times. You don't have to use six inch sections. I just find it's like more efficient to bend it rather than add two three inch sections.
And I am putting the glass onto the table, which is generally not good because it could crack the glass, but this is four millimeter rod, which is super thin. So we can get away with it right now. If we're working with anything thicker, we would be using a kiln shelf and just putting the kiln shelf on underneath the graphite and that won't crack the glass. So now we've got two squares. Like that. Okay, get them to where they look like they line up nicely. And now we're gonna assemble these together. So I just bent these, so they're hot in the corner, right? Like, so I'm not gonna forget that. I'm not gonna get complacent and forget. So I'm gonna hold them on the edges and we're gonna heat them very carefully. If you don't like the feeling of this, we can put handles on them, but we're working with such a small flame here that it's generally fine. Yeah, you can also do that. Yes, absolutely. You could cut your four other pieces at this point. All right. Now we're going to get this side. So I want to open it up a little bit here. So I'm just going to heat this corner so it opens up and matches up a little nicer. There we go. And now we will heat this part fuse it together now the two parts as you can see like they uh there's like tiny little gap there and that's fine that can that'll happen a lot so i'm going to add a little dollop of glass here just a little bit of glue in this crack and then i'll set it down on the table and let it flat and do the other one at this point these corners are cool almost four mil cools a lot quicker than thicker rod use these this one i'm just going to fuse it on and then put it on the table and now it's rocking a little bit so it's a little um it's not flush on the table so i'm going to heat it one more time we want it to be flush that's really going to help a lot so I'm just gonna put it right on the table right away and let it get flat. Give it a second to set up. And then we can do this corner. Do, lay it flat again. All right, so generally when we're working and doing hot seals like this, um, you're gonna have to heat both sides. So. So flip it and make sure you have a hot seal on both sides because like I said, you can get a hot seal in one spot and not on the other side or something. And it's going to be imperative to have hot seals on all sides while we're doing this. So the other way we can get it flat is we can heat it with the hand torch uh, while it's flat on the table. So I'm going to introduce the hand torch to you guys now. It's very exciting. Um, it's a new chapter in our flame working journey. So there's a hand torch at every station, so everyone will get one. Yours is here, but there's also a place for it right there, I think. Um, so you'll be using this one, even though I'm demoing it right now. Um, but it's good because I'll demo with this one, and it is the most finicky one. So you can see how fun it is to work with. So when we're turning on the hand torch, it works like the, it works like these bench burners, but it's even more sensitive. Um, so if you've done jewelry working, you may have worked with these before, but um, this this one in particular, it just, you just need to be really um, gentle while lighting it because it's just a little finicky. So when we light it, we're gonna turn on the propane very slowly and light it. Um, if we turn on the propane too high, you'll see there's a gap between the torch face and um, like where the fire starts. That means that the propane's on too high and when we turn on the oxygen, we'll blow it out. So just make sure there's no gap and then slowly open the oxygen and give yourself a nice little flame like that. If you turn on the oxygen too quickly, it'll blow out the propane. And that happens a lot, so just light it again. I like to keep my bench burner on as a pilot light so that if I need to relight it, I can just light it super quick and not have to fumble with the striker and find it um, and or have propane steering into the room. So as long as you're very aware of your bench burner being on, you can have it on. 
Um, but it, it can be dangerous if you've got two flames going at once. So now we have our hand torch on. I'm going to um, just give these one more little go over with the torch. Uh, and I'm feeling that make sure they're not rocking because if they're rocking, they're going to be out of flush. They're going to be um, they're going to be a little off kilter, and we want them to be straight. So I'm just going to keep the corners. Now, when I'm heating on the kiln shelf, um, it's important to note that if you heat the kiln shelf too much, your glass will fuse to it. And um, you can sometimes get it off, but it'll have a texture of kiln shelf on it. And you're not really going to like that. Sometimes it can get so hot that it will stick to the kiln shelf and be fused permanently. And that's a real bummer. So I'm not heating the kiln shelf too much. And the key to that is rather than heating straight down like this, I'm going to be heating at the side, at this sort of angle, and that's going to allow me to heat the glass more and the kiln shelf less. If you notice the kiln shelf is really glowing a lot, it's getting a little too hot, so just move it around and move it to like a cooler area on the kiln shelf. Can we do this on the graphite? Um, the graphite gets really hot and it's smaller, so if you were to work on the graphite, it's possible, but if you were to touch it, uh, you might get burnt more easily and it's more slippery. So the kiln shelf is just great. Also, you can draw on the kiln shelf. So if you want to create a pattern for yourself, um, that's really useful. And we'll be doing more of that next week too. All right, so we're going to start with our, we're going to start building upward here. And You can give like a prime look. Okay. So I'm gonna get my little rods that I built and start to fuse them into place. And come away. It only needs a little bit of heat because it's four millimeter. And I'm gonna try to keep it straight while I'm while it's cooling. Make it nice and straight. And I like to use these or some sort of a straight edge sometimes to make sure it's straight, just as a visual aid from all different angles. Okay, we'll do the other side. These don't have to be perfect hot seals yet and it's not really likely that they will be because they're not attached to anything. Um, so if I try to make them a hot seal, I will, you know, they'll be wobbling around. So the key is to just, you know, get them on and then get all the pieces touching. So they're all supported and, uh, and then you can fuse them. So this one I kind of stuck on and it's just slightly not where I want it to be. So I'm taking the heat off right away and it's so much of a cold seal that it comes right off. Can you see it all over there? Want me to move these? You can see it? All right, great. All right, so they're they're pretty they're pretty straight, and I'm gonna adjust them as I go. The key is to have a couple that are nice and at least one that's really good to, and straight to start. Now I'm going to start with this section. Now what's gonna happen is that the piece is gonna want to move around when I want it to stay. So let's take some little pieces of kiln furniture, little tiny kiln bricks, or if you have like a piece of graphite, you can use that and you can weigh it down like this. It's very helpful. Right, so I want this one to come out a little bit, so I'm just gonna heat it at the bottom and it will work like a hinge for a door and just allow me to put it right where I want it to go.
get them into place. Now, when you heave sections like this, um, you might notice because of um, the surface tension, if you heat two pieces that are almost touching, they might ball back up and actually like, shy away from each other. Um, and that will happen with stuff like this a lot. So what I will do is once they start to get hot, I just get a really thin rod and I wipe them together and that just encourages them to meet. And that's that little wipe is all it takes. So this one is a tiny bit too long. So I'm going to pull off a little extra. And that's all it needs. All right, so now I have all my different sides on and I can now go to every corner and make it a hot seal. If your seals are not hot, like I said, they will crack. And when you're working with this, you might notice, you might hear cracking noises. And that's just because those are your seals that aren't hot um, cracking. And it's okay, you don't need to fear too much because you're going to heat them anyway to make sure they're hot seals. So if you hear any cracking, try to locate the crack and then give it attention with your torch. So I'm gonna go in from all the inside angles. The kiln shelf will get hot when you're torching it. So um, just being aware of that, I'm not gonna just grab it to move it. I, I'm just gonna feel it lightly to see how hot it is. Flip it and get the other ones. Any questions right now? Kind of making sense? Sweet. All right, so now I have heat in a lot of places. Every single corner is hot. Um, there's some more adjustments that I can do, but I'm not really gonna do anything else until I put a handle on this baby, so. I'm gonna get myself out of the danger zone and treat myself to a nice handle. So I'm gonna get a four millimeter rod that's a little longer because this is gonna be garage. And when we put the handle, I wanna put uh, I wanna put it on a corner that I'm happy with because I don't want to be having to heat that section. So we'll get a nice corner that has it's a nice hot seal. We're gonna hot seal our handle on here. Even though it's temporary handle, we don't wanna risk putting it in a cold seal because we don't want the whole thing to fall to the table while we're working on it. So I put it, I let it hang. I put it on the corner like this because it's gonna allow me to turn the glass really easily and it'll be ergonomic. If we put the handle on the, one of the sides, it would be really awkward and um, very unergonomic for my wrists. So now um, we can sort of uh, do any more adjustments. This one right here, that side, I want it to come out a little bit. I'm gonna heat it. Heat the two areas where it's connected and you can use your knife or you can use your graphite paddle and really touch up any areas like that. It's a little out of line. So wherever you heat it, it will work like a hinge. It'll allow you to heat that area. So I'm heating both sides so I can really move that whole entire side there. Right. And really the, the trick with working with networking is, is keeping all the lines clean. If it gets really lumpy and bumpy in any area, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb and you might not want that, you probably won't. So just keeping it nice and clean. If you have any extra, just wiping it away um, with the rod. And that's a technique that just takes a little bit of practice. So finally, uh, once you start having like a piece like this, you can start to um, fill it in. You can use decorations of any kind. Um, to go with the theme of what I'm, my little sculpture that I'm making based off of all of my different demo pieces, 
we'll do some curly lines. So when you're bending lines in glass, like I said, you never want to just heat one area. You want a smooth line. We're going back and forth like this. And that will give you a smooth bend. And you bend it out of the flame. So I'm, I'm heating the area right before where I'm going to bend. Like before meaning right to the side of it. And right now you have an armature basically made by the cube so you can write words in here, you can do imagery, um, two-dimensional graphic work. There's anything you really want to do, you can do. Sort of like a blank canvas. So what I'm doing when I'm doing these connections is I'm actually making the piece much stronger. Every connection point connecting the sides is, is really fortifying it and you'll be able to feel it when you're holding it. Like it won't vibrate as much, it will be more solid. So adding a connection there to there, then I'll do it there to there there and just connecting all the different points. If you find that it's hard to control and you're getting weird lumpy lines that you don't like, 99% of the time it just means your flame is too hot. So turn it down, give yourself a gentler, bushier flame. Turn down your oxygen. And then when I get to this side here where they're overlapping, I don't want to melt it off like right after where they overlap. I want them to sort of join. So I'm going to heat it from the side and tack it on and then pull it off. Because I don't want to have any extra glass. And then we'll heat, get it from the inside and get all of these seals. So this is one shape and one line texture, but the possibilities are endless. You can do any kind of texture, any kind of shape. Um, I had a student make a house and he made all the lines between look like bricks or masonry, different, he, he got really great um, textures just with different lines. You can use different line weights. This is four millimeter rod, you can use three mil. Um, and then once we fill this up, this is, um, you know, this is just a very basic example of the piece. So this is just something I'm doing for fun where I'm just using all my demo pieces together. Um, and you can suspend shapes inside of shapes. So this is a tetrahedron that is inside of a cube and it's just suspended on three points there. And once you have all of your like different connections, you can actually start to remove parts of the edges of the original piece so we can remove different sections to make it look more like a sort of ghostly ethereal cube. All right, 